Well, hey guys, in this video, we're gonna be talking all about vitamin A supplements for skin and hair. I get a lot of questions about this topic. Hey, is it a good idea to start taking vitamin A for acne or for hair loss? We're gonna cover all of that in this video, but before getting into it, make sure you are subscribed. If you like skincare content from a dermatologist, hit the bell notification because that's gonna let you know when my videos go live. Having a skin condition, whether it be acne or dryness, it can be really distressing. People are motivated to try and change things up in their lifestyle. They may wanna take supplements. And if you have hair loss, likewise, there's a huge market of supplements out there marketed towards people with hair loss. It is really distressing though to cope with these things. Now, before I get into vitamin A, I wanna take a moment to thank today's video sponsor, Hero Cosmetics. Y'all know I'm a huge fan of the Mighty Patch. And I bring it up in this video because like I said, having acne can be really emotionally distressing. A lot of people struggle with picking their skin, breakouts, pimples, they wanna squeeze and pick. And as y'all know from my acne videos, that really can slow down healing and Importantly, it can put you at risk for a scar or post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation that takes a really long time to heal. One of the reasons why I love Hero Cosmetics Mighty Patch so much is that it is made of high quality hydrocolloid that's very thin and very lightweight. You apply it to a pimple and it really protects the pimple from your fingers first and foremost, but it helps with healing because the hydrocolloid helps to absorb the inflammatory exudate. They came out with a patch for the nose and this product is great if you get breakouts on the nose or you have a tendency to squeeze pimples that appear there or blackheads which are common on the nose. The nose is a very sebaceous site on your face. There are a lot of prominent pores there that bother a lot of people. This particular product is fantastic because not only will it help with reducing the chances that you squeeze any pimples, but it helps absorb excess oiliness. It's super thin, very lightweight. You comfortably can wear it as you sleep overnight. And the following morning, when you take it off, you can actually see the oily residue. Uh, you wake up, remove it, and it kind of helps degrease the surface of your skin. And it also helps if you've got any breakouts. And then again, it helps reduce the picking. Uh, Hero Cosmetics, in addition to the Mighty Patch, they have many fantastic products, many of which I have reviewed and recommended on this channel. I'm a huge fan of their sunscreen. It has a green tint to it that helps kind of mask redness. It's a mineral sunscreen. Definitely recommend checking it out. It's a great everyday moisturizer with sunscreen in it. And then their Rescue Balm is another hero, hero cosmetic product that's really great for helping minimize dryness, peeling, irritation, and facilitating barrier recovery from a healing pimple. Um, right now, they are giving me a discount code to share with you guys. If you use the link in my description box, you can save 15% off. So definitely take advantage of that since they have so many great products is you can actually relatively quickly get free shipping on your order. So for example, if you stock up on the nose patch, if you get three patches, that basically covers your shipping and ends up saving you even more. Or if you wanna throw in their sunscreen, I cannot plug that one enough. That is one of my favorite Hero Cosmetic products or the Rescue Balm. And then their classic Mighty Patch, the, the Circle Patches, fantastic if you are prone to breakouts like on the jaw area. They also make a more horizontal strip that you could use to a wider area like on the jawline. Those are really great, really great options as well. So definitely take advantage of that and thank you Hero Cosmetics for sponsoring today's video. Vitamin A is a term that encompasses fat soluble retinol, retinal, and retinal esters, which are the storage form in our body of vitamin A. And we get it through our diet from a variety of food sources. Because it's fat soluble, it is stored more readily in the body as opposed to water soluble vitamins that if we take in too much, we kind of just pee them out. Vitamin A is vital for the growth of all cells. And when we're talking about our hair, the hair cells really rely on healthy levels of vitamin A for proper division. In the absence of good levels of vitamin A in the body, you can experience hair loss and hair shedding. And when we're talking about the skin, 
vitamin A is critical for healthy skin barrier function. Earlier this year, I did a video all about the skin signs of low vitamin A. Definitely check that one out uh, because it really illustrates how vital vitamin A is for healthy skin function and for keeping you protected from the outside world. Not only is vitamin A key for the skin cells and their health and integrity, but for your immune system. Your skin and your immune system, they are business partners and having low vitamin A impacts both systems. For this reason, when you have poor vitamin A, you really have a complete breakdown of that barrier and then the immune response, and it makes you at high, high risk for a variety of infections. Vitamin A is very important for the healthy function of your sebaceous oil gland. And for people with acne, vitamin A forms either applied to the skin or taken by mouth can really help get the pore to turn over in a more efficient manner, reducing pore clogging, and also help with the oiliness factor of things. Specifically, we're talking about topical vitamin A. You guys have heard my videos on tretinoin and other forms of vitamin A like tazeratine. Now, you also have oral vitamin A, isotretinoin, otherwise known as Accutane. I've got a lot of videos on that on this channel, by the way, and what to expect with it. So if you are being put on Accutane, isotretinoin, definitely check those out. I talk about skincare products, what to expect, bust some myths. Anyways, all that to say, we know that there's a therapeutic role in the treatment of acne for vitamin A. We get vitamin A from our diet, either preformed vitamin A from animal sources or pro-vitamin A in the form of carotenoids from plant sources. And both forms of vitamin A from our diet must be metabolized by the cells in our body to the active form of vitamin A. As we're getting vitamin A from our diet, Whatever we don't use gets stored in our liver in the form of retinyl esters. And there's a very nicely controlled flux that keeps our blood levels of vitamin A in check, going from that storage form to available vitamin A. Now, when you have too much vitamin A in the body, it kind of overwhelms that, and that is what can lead to vitamin A toxicity, which we'll get into later, but that is not a good thing. You definitely can have too much of a good thing, especially in the case of a fat-soluble uh, vitamin like vitamin A. What foods have vitamin A? Food sources of vitamin A, they're abundant. You have meat, eggs, milk, yogurt, then plant-based sources, kale, spinach, sweet potato, carrots, pumpkin. However, some people don't have the ability to absorb these fat-soluble vitamins well, and they are at risk for deficiency, specifically people who have Cystic fibrosis supplementation is really important. They can easily become vitamin A deficient and they are at risk for those skin signs of vitamin A that I covered in the last video on vitamin A. If the plasma level of vitamin A dips below 0.7 micromole per liter, that is considered inadequacy. Supplements that may be recommended and reasons for low vitamin A include not only malabsorption, but just poor diet overall. And in cases where there is a risk for low vitamin A, supplementation may be recommended. But should you go supplementing simply for the health of your skin, given what we know about how important vitamin A is for skin and hair? No. When it comes to hair loss, let's do a deep dive there. For hair loss, it's a very emotionally distressing thing to go through. A lot of people experience hormonally related hair loss called androgenetic alopecia. I have many videos on this. It can happen in men and women. The um, hair follicle miniaturizes as a result of our hormones, but other people experience autoimmune hair loss known as alopecia areata, and you can have hair loss related to another dermatologic condition like lupus, or you can have a hair loss that is just the result of undergoing some sort of physical or emotional stress. That's called a telogen effluvium. Massive hair shedding happens about three months after the stressful event. And stressful events can include fever, viral illness, pregnancy and birth, surgery, starting or stopping birth control pills, anemia, low vitamin D levels. Hair loss can be temporary or it can be permanent. 
And if you are dealing with hair loss, I cannot emphasize this enough. It's so important to find a dermatologist who will take you seriously, take your symptoms and hair loss conditions seriously, because hair loss really requires a deep dive investigation as to the underlying cause before any treatment can be even begun to be pursued properly. Usually that's gonna be blood work, checking iron levels, vitamin D, blood levels, making sure you don't have an anemia, thyroid levels, all sorts of things. A physical exam, yes, we still do those in medicine. We still look at the patient, even though it seems as though our back is always turned to patients these days, plugging and chugging at the electronic medical record. Yes, we do still examine patients. And in the case of hair loss, it's gonna be a scalp exam, up close with a special magnifying glass to look at the scalp, the scalp health, the hair follicle health. Uh, what's called a hair pull test, where we literally pull some hair out and look to see how many hairs are in the shedding phase. We also might need to take a scalp biopsy. So all of these data points really can help the dermatologist formulate the, the best diagnosis for your hair loss. And in the case of hair shedding, a lot of times, once the stressful event has been removed, the hair shedding you know, dies down and your hair growth goes back to the way it would have been normally uh, and it's not permanent. Now, if you have an underlying nutrient deficiency causing the telogen effluvium, that needs to be corrected. But vitamin A deficiency as a cause of telogen effluvium is going to be very, very rare in the general population. Unless you are following some extremely restrictive diet or you have an underlying medical condition where there's poor absorption, it's very unlikely that it's vitamin A deficiency causing your hair loss. What about for acne? Uh, vitamin A supplementation, it is not as well researched for acne as the medication Accutane. Accutane has side effects, of course, but so does vitamin A supplementation. With Accutane, there's more regulation and consistency and predictability in terms of side effects and what to look for, how to monitor the best dose. We don't have that kind of data for just vitamin A supplementation alone. Just like Accutane, it can really, really dry out your skin a lot. Can you overdose on vitamin A from your food? Uh, no, the amount in food is kind of just right <laughs> that you absorb. It's actually, you know, is actually fine. It's very difficult, if not impossible, to overdose on vitamin A from food sources. The exception being some animal livers uh, are, you know, because vitamin A is stored in the liver, and if you eat a lot of liver, I mean a lot. Nowadays though, that's gained a lot of popularity on social media. So, you know, there, yeah, that is more of a, a food, I guess you would say, that is more at risk for vitamin A toxicity. You will find in the medical literature reports of vitamin A toxicity from consuming excessive amounts of liver, but by and large, it is incredibly rare to get vitamin A toxicity from food. The recommended daily vitamin A intake is 4,300 international units per day. And your body can handle up to 10,000 international units per day. At that level and beyond is where you start running into vitamin A toxicity, which is nothing to mess around with. Acute toxicity is gonna present with nausea, vomiting, headache because it can actually cause increased intracranial pressure, make you very dizzy, irritable, and you can even go into slip into coma and death. With vitamin A toxicity, you can have very dry skin, peeling skin, and it can cause your hair to fall out, telogen effluvium. That can be enlargement of the liver, the spleen. It could cause your fingers to crack, peeling skin, dryness, cracked lips, and hair loss. These are all symptoms of taking too much vitamin A. Excessive vitamin A can not only affect the hair on your head, but it also can lead to hair loss from other body sites, like under your arms, the pubic area, your eyebrows, eyelashes. Here's something I get a lot of questions about. What about taking in too much beta carotene from fruits and vegetables? Doesn't that cause problems known as keratinemia? Keratinemia is different from vitamin A toxicity. Like I said, it's 
unlikely, almost unheard of to get toxic levels of beta carotene from fruits and vegetables, but you can develop keratinemia in which the excess car carotenoids cause your skin to look yellowish orange. And we definitely see that a fair amount. Some people develop it if they go through a phase where they're rather enjoying carrots. Young babies often will develop it if they're eating uh, a lot of orangey baby foods like pureed sweet potatoes, carrots. These are common baby foods. Sometimes you can see subtle evidence of keratinemia in babies. It's not harmful, um, but uh, once you stop consuming that, or in the case of a baby, once you kind of adjust and incorporate more foods in the case of a baby, that goes away. And it's not like a permanent thing. When vitamin A levels are too high, the kind of control and regulatory mechanisms are overwhelmed. Uh, in your liver, and that is why you can develop liver toxicity. And that is not anything that you want to want to deal with. So yeah, at the end of the day, vitamin A supplementation. Should you supplement? You should talk to your doctor and find out if that's going to be right for you. Because in many people, it's unnecessary and long-term can lead to toxicity. Because again, vitamin A, it is fat soluble and is more readily stored in the body in the form of retinal esters in the liver. The best way to get the right amount of vitamin A for healthy hair growth and for your skin is to eat a balanced diet that includes uh, different sources uh, of either preformed vitamin A from animal foods and or uh, pro-vitamin A from plant-based sources, carotenoids. Your body will metabolize both the forms into what it needs and whatever is left over is stored in the liver in a healthy way. All right, guys, so that is everything on vitamin A supplements for hair and skin. I hope this video was informative. Thank you, Hero Cosmetics, for sponsoring today's video. Definitely check out the Mighty Patch, especially if you have the tendency to pick your skin. It is a really useful tool and it helps absorb some of that excess oiliness. Very comfortable to wear. Anyways, on the end slate, I am going to put my video on the skin signs of vitamin A deficiency. Definitely check that out. Very interesting, lots of images. So make sure you watch that. But if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And as always, don't forget sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.